Hello everyone, my name is Harish and today we are going to be talking about the true value of a university education. And with me are three wonderful guests, starting with Alan Tan, the director of Mr. Mobile, a company he started in 2010. Dr. Helen Chai, the assistant dean and director of the BBA program at NUS. And Yip Ming Feng, financial writer and head of Seedly. Now, you each have prepared a statement about a certain perspective about a university degree. Yes. So, can we see what your statements are? My statement is that a degree functions like a blue tick on Instagram. Dr. Helen? Universities are preparing students for the real world. And Alan? If you already know what you want, don't go to school. Ah, okay. Interesting. Three very different perspectives, all of which should help us answer the question, are universities sufficiently preparing students for the modern economy? Okay, so maybe we can start with Ming Feng. I think there's a lot of meaning to this statement. Number one, it acts like a signal to your future employer that you have some certain level of knowledge or years in the education system and it also helps them determine uh, which level you are at. But then again, a blue tick on Instagram can be something rather superficial. And I think a degree is necessary sometimes to get you through that first door. But what happens after that is actually more or less up to you as a person and your character and how hardworking you, you are. Having a degree does make uh, a job hunting a little bit easier. A HR department, you have hundreds if not thousands of resumes, CVs to look through. So one of the uh, shortcuts or quick way to do this is actually to s go through the qualification. It's like uh, a sieve, a first cut, a first filter for employers. Firstly, I would like to state that out of all four of us, I'm the only one without a degree. To me, I just look at it on a very superficial level. It's a blue tick, it's on Instagram. But does it mean that someone without a blue tick on Instagram cannot be as successful? I think the answer is no. So as an employer, right now I have 55 employees in my company. My HR, I always tell her uh, when you do job advertisements to not include requirements for candidates who have a university degree. I tell her, no, I don't want to restrict the, the pool of interviewees only to degree holders because I believe that having real-life working experience is more important so, I mean, you know, being at a university as well, how do these perspectives kind of like jive with what you see with students? It's a very natural progression for high school leavers, right? After they finish their polytechnic diplomas, when they finish their A-levels, the next thing they would like to go into is uh, to think about getting a university degree. And therefore, at that juncture in their life, some students essentially are very clear of what they want and they, they go right into pursuing it. But there are others who need more time. In a way, going to university may help them in that process of self-discovery. To be honest, in modern world, technology has enabled learning to be supercharged through anything online. Mm. It may not necessarily come in form of a certification, right? Probably, well, I think the, the benefits that university has on us is potentially the connection that we build, yes. the friends that we meet. I can say the same thing for ARMY. I really do agree. Someone posed me the question, um, if I could turn back time, would I have attended university? Which actually set me thinking, I will only go back, not for the causes, not for the knowledge, but for the connections. The reason why I got this far in my career is actually through the connections that I had back in the day. I didn't go to uh, university, but I'm, thankfully I went to ARMY and I got to meet my good friend Ming Fong and he really helped me in building Mr. Mobile to, to where we are today. It would be more effective if we had more connections, if we had more friends who are able to share with us the, the, the knowledge that they, they, they have in the working world. You know, uh, Helen, your statement was that universities prepare you for the real world. But what, what aspects of the real world? I was about to say that, that university education uh, have that hardware part and the software part. This is a very rough analogy, right? Mm. The hardware part essentially is what you learn inside the classroom. The software part, you see, for university education, it's going beyond just what goes inside the classroom. That very holistic student experience. I think Ming Feng just now you mentioned about like-minded friends coming together. For example, Carousel, Sui Rui, as well as Marcus, they were classmates, they did projects together. They went on the NUS overseas college together. When they came back, that's how Carousel was founded. Software is essential, it's important, it's good. But what about the hardware? For me, uh, I went to uh, Polytechnic, uh, didn't go to university, and I apologise to my lecturers in Poly. Uh. 
<laughs> I forgot most of the hardware I learned in school. Yeah. Things I learned uh, in, in school, um, concepts, accounting and finances and finance courses. I studied in a business setting. I believe I only managed to apply as much as 5% of what I learned in school. So I would like to ask all of you who have been to university, do you agree that hardware is actually irrelevant, but actually software is the one that, that is re really brings value to education at a university? Maybe I can, I can yeah. jump in on this point. Yeah. So I think if I were to look at university education as a full system, uh, there are a few success metrics. So number one is that you're able to effectively sort out students into what their strength is. Next, you need to make sure that the, the knowledge that you're putting into these students then are relatable and relevant or even front-running the trends. It is slightly difficult for universities to constantly update their syllabus to be able to know what's the next trend that's coming in. Next, speaking from personal experience, now we talk about the, the way students are being sorted out. I have a strong passion for economics, econs, uh, since when I was uh, in JC. And with that, that was the only subject that I scored distinction for. Mm. The rest was, was really bad. Uh, I mm. tried applying to, uh, for an econs degree everywhere, but I was told because I didn't score an A for physics, I didn't score an A for some other subject, I couldn't apply for the course, which is why I have to get a private degree. In that case, I was wondering, like, what has my physics knowledge has to do with my love for econs, mm -hmm. even though I love econs so much. I see the arrows <laughs> coming at me. <laughs> I'm really sorry that you had the experience, but I think time has evolved right now. Universities now go through a set of what we call the uh, aptitude-based admissions, right? Um, whereby each individual applicant is actually being assessed based on their pinnacles of uh, excellence. It's no longer one size fits all, and um, I think that's the right way to go. There is also the notion that, you know, dropping out of school to pursue entrepreneurship is the cool thing to do. You know, you see stories of uh, Steve Jobs, uh, Mark Zuckerberg dropping out, and do you guys feel that it's kind of like uh, painting a too rosy a picture? Just three months before I finished my, uh, my NS, uh, before I ORD, I actually remember this conversation I had with my dad. He fetched me from my camp, and as we were going home, I remember, I tell him, Pa, I want to further my studies. I want to study university. He said something that I'll never forget. He said, why go to study uni? Don't waste your time. Okay? Uh, the, the reason was because uh, he had a store, mobile phone store, okay, which he had employed someone to, to run. It wasn't making money. Okay, and he actually told me that, okay, right now I have this store, it's not making money. After you finish the army, come and help me in this mobile phone store. So, Back to this as well, I would like to say that the key word in this whole phase is opportunity. But grabbing this opportunity and what you make of it and how you progress from there is a totally different matter altogether. However, if everyone out there, if you have opportunity, please take it because you never know when this opportunity will come again. And if I, we were to rewind back, if I had insisted to go to university uh, when I was 22 years old and I went four years later, uh, maybe the business would have collapsed already and there would have been no opportunity for me to take over that business. There's no age limit on entering to universities, right? Mm. right? You can go into university at, at any point in time. So it's never too late. I definitely don't have that opportunity then. And then when that happens, right, then uh, you are at a crossroad of not knowing what you want to do. Somehow having a degree seems to be the fallback case for me. I'm not saying that, that you must go and have a degree, but it somehow became this normal route that everyone takes. Right? I have friends who pursue all the way to even pass degree and they, they still don't know what they want to do. You mentioned that you ended up did going to university to get a degree. Do you feel that it prepared you for that economy at that point in time? My first job was actually a, as a data analyst, very applicable to the econs degree that I studied. There was this incident that, that, that struck me the most. There was a guy who came back from Australia and we are all data analysts. He noticed that the way we have been doing things is very inefficient and he decides to code, a soft, uh, code, code something to, to actually solve the problem. When we tested it out, the first day we, we finished our job that would have taken us hours in 20 minutes. And then we went around checking out the data and it's all perfect. Yeah. And for, for the rest of the months, we were just doing this. Every day we come in, 20 minutes, job's done, and then we were like reading up our own things. So did he have like a degree? He had a degree, but the skills he applied 
was something else. And it almost seems like the degree itself doesn't matter. Uh, because I, I, for example, I studied mechanical engineering and now I do content online. So is that something that you see even in the university? Like it's less about yeah. the degree. Skills are always evolve. But it's one thing that's actually very rooted and very fundamental, right? Is critical thinking. Okay, what is critical thinking? Critical thinking is a process whereby you start first from listening and reading carefully. And then coming next is to question the any hidden assumptions. And then you'll do a, a bit of interpretation about what is the real cause. And afterwards you've analyzed it. Then you go into the process of problem solving. This whole process of critical thinking, I think it's what university is about. Maybe I can jump in here. So like back to my, my statement, right? Sometimes going to a prestigious university also acts a bit like a branding, where you are deemed to be slightly better than the others who have been to other type of universities. Yeah, but then again, if you know what you want to do, I think back to Alan's point, then you should go for that. There are also uh, very influential figures trying to encourage that. For example, Peter Thiel. You know, he started the Thiel Foundation where he would give a $100,000 seed investment in anyone who chooses to start something as opposed to go for a university degree. On the contrary, I wouldn't say going for a degree is not without a risk. I think there's definitely some form of opportunity cost over there, right? Be it financially. We all know that there are, there are folks out there who potentially has not enough money for a degree and they have to work part-time just to pursue it plus the time opportunity cost over there. So, I mean, it is interesting because I would imagine 20 years ago, it was a very clear choice. Is a university degree valuable? I would assume that most people would say yes. But now we're at a stage where it is not that clear cut, which is interesting like, because there's so much information out there and it's up to, like what you said, a very personal choice whether or not to pursue. You never know the kind of uh, path where it would have led you if you have taken, if you have gone to this crossroad, right? Path A, path B. If you have taken path A, you will never know what path B is going to be like. Right, so that's what makes life very exciting. And on that thought-provoking note, we have come to the end of the discussion. And with so many differing perspectives on whether a degree is enough today, what is yours? If you want to dive deeper into the topic, you can check out two books. Higher Expectations, Can Colleges Teach Students What They Need to Know in the 21st Century by Derek Bock, or In Defense of a Liberal Education by Farid Zakaria. You can find these books at your nearest library or the NLB mobile app. And if you want to find out more about higher education and other issues, you can also check out the Read to Be Sure website. So with that, would you agree that a university is a sure path to success or not enough to get ahead? We want to hear from you, so leave your comments below. <laughs>